Justin McCarron's one catch for 73. Third down and three. As McCarron splits out wide at the top of your screen at the 49. They're two of seven on third down conversions. Here's Mason. And Mason picks up the first down. He's drilled out of bounds by Eric Brown. Just running a quick flanker screen. Get your lineman out in front of you. Little block. You see Derek Mason take a little route back, a little uh, curl, come right around, and knows just enough to get to the first down. Eric Brown delivering a blow, and Eric Brown is a guy that's been trying to hold the secondary together for the Houston Texans. And the Texans have done a pretty solid job today, other than that big McCarron's play on the stop and go. They've, they've uh, kept everything in front of them. First and ten at the 45. McNair to the sideline, caught Bennett, and Bennett is stood up and dropped at the 36, an 11-yard pickup. Kenny Wright making the tackle. You know, I think this offense, and it's been, it, is, it has been out of sync a little bit these last few weeks, not as, as powerful as it was the first half of the year. I think when Drew Bennett got hurt, that the, the, this offense changed a little bit. They really miss him out there in the solid routes and those solid hands. And, you know, they've done a great job this year, Steve McNair, of spreading the ball around just like he has today. Uh, that's been one of the big parts of the success of this Titans offense. But they miss Drew Bennett out for three or four weeks with that caps pull. First down to 10 at 34. McNair underneath, caught by Mason, who dropped at 25. And Derek Mason has just become only the third Titans or Oilers wide receiver to record at least 1,200 receiving yards in a single season. And that's going all the way back to 1960. Bill Groman, 61. Charles Hennigan, he did it in 64 as well. And Haywood Jeffries, back in 1991, had a 1,400-yard season. You said the O word. The Oilers. That's right. You know, every time I do a, a Texans game or a, or a Titans game now, I tell myself, whatever you do, don't say Oilers. <laughs> whatever you do. So now you've thrown it out there. <laughs> it's in the universe That's now. right. So it's, if I've got to make sure that I don't do that here in the next hour. So Derek Mason with a huge grab. And you talk about guys they're missing. Tyrone Calico <laughs> missing this game today because of a knee injury. He's the third receiver. Very dangerous as well. First and 10 at the 24. Brown running over the left side. And he gets to the 17. But if you look at the Titans receivers, they have a very nice group of receivers this season. They really do. And Calico, you mentioned, was out and big play threat. And so they've got four guys that you say, hey, who do you cover? And with Drew Bennett back, and of course, Derek Mason, the leader, making the Pro Bowl. And Justin McCarron is going to be a superstar, I think, in this league. I think his speed and his guts and his courage and his hands, I, I think that uh, got a lot of positive years looking forward for this Tennessee Titans offense. Second and three at the 17. Mason in motion. Here's Brown. Cuts it back. And Brown gets to the 12. Stood up by Steve Martin should be a first down though and you mentioned how Jeff Fisher likes Chris Brown I really like Chris Brown he's starting to run with more authority and of course a rookie and early in the season we we had him we saw him get a couple of carries and and you know what he was kind of picking his way through the holes and that's one of the things that's natural for a young ball player but he's starting to really run with authority he's a tall running back reminds me a little bit of Marcus Allen he's got some shake runs upright and He's got a burst. He really likes to get it in there hard. It's nice to see him running so hard. Five carries, 49 yards for Brown. Eddie George back in the lineup. Tennessee in the red zone. Here's Eddie. And he couples forward to the 11-yard line. Hey, speaking of Chris Brown, I, I, uh, I knew that Jeff Fisher liked him early in the year, so I picked him up on my fantasy team, and he wasn't getting enough carries. And the minute I let him go, the amazing Jim Nance <laughs> came swooping in and picked him up. Oh, so you're in a, you're in a fantasy league with Nance. Oh, yeah, the Gridiron Guru League. In fact, Jim Nance is in the finals today. This weekend, it's the finals. He, he made it all the way to the finals. I didn't. 
but he is not going to win because his starting quarterback was Trent Green. Oh, wow. And take a look at the runners for the Titans today. Second and eight at the 11. McNair underneath, picked off. McCree down the sideline. Marlon McCree, can he outrun Eddie George? Yes, touchdown Texans. 95 Two things. One thing, Steve McNair's only thrown six interceptions this year. It's rare that he throws a ball that he would like back. You see Marlon McCurry breaking on the ball. The second thing is, Steve McNair, did that ankle slow him enough? I would think that he would usually either make that tackle or push Marlon McCree out of bounds. Didn't have enough juice to get there, and McCree goes the distance. So Chris Brown comes in for the extra point. It's up, and we are... Ah. How about this? 844 to go, third quarter. Texans 10. Titans 10. Maybe this isn't the best time to say it, but uh, I think you're really beautiful. Well, I, I've always been attracted to you too, Paul. Wait, hold on one sec, babe. Excuse me? Want to get away? Now you can with Southwest Airlines Internet Specials. Just $39 to $99 when you purchase by January 19th. Only at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. not on anybody's list. Hectic holiday shopping can wear you down, so Staples makes it simple with digital and technology gifts that are easy to buy. And right now, Staples.com orders are delivered free. Holiday gifts at Staples. That was easy. Introducing the all-new rotary-powered Mazda RX-8. The way you feel about sports cars will never be the same. The Buffalo Bills look forward to spreading lots of holiday cheer with their old friends and division winners, the New England Patriots, next Saturday on CBS. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Marlon McCree with a franchise record 95-yard interception return for a touchdown. And what a scene here in Houston. These fans are into it. Steve McNair can only look on after throwing the interception. And the Titans are in a ball game now. When we talked to Houston the other day, they said they were embarrassed. When it came to the first game, losing so badly week six. McCarran, and he's stuffed at the 20. Vaughn with the tackle. And there's the hero for the moment. Marlon McCree tied the game up at 10. Really? Big line at the toll booth. You know those electronic passes? Yeah. Used to be one lane, then two, now three. And you don't have one? No. It's the on-demand world. Huh? Electronic pass connects to toll booth. Toll booth connects to bank. Bank to your credit card. You come in here with your laptop, click, click, pay your bill through the air. But you don't get it, so you wait in line. That means something.
The difference in carbs between Miller Lite and Coors Light is only 1.8 grams. You can burn 1.8 grams while you're holiday shopping online. So be a smart shopper and buy some Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Star premium quality denim. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. The difference in carbs between Miller Lite and Coors Light is only 1.8 grams. You can burn 1.8 grams surfing. Channel surfing. So put down the remote and pick up a Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Friendly non-stop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. IBM, official information technology partner of the NFL. And by Mazda, there's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. Welcome back to Houston. Our score is 10 up, third quarter. And they are enjoying this one here at Reliance Stadium. Is that Britney Spears? Looks like Britney Spears, a uh, Titans fan, or Texans fan, rather. First and 10 at the 22. Geez, you got all excited. <laughs> Here's Eddie George over the left side, breaks it back, and is dropped at the 22. Jamie Sharper, let's take another look at the interception. And let's go in this inside the mind of a defensive player. Watch Marlon McCree right here. There's only one receiver outside, so his responsibility is the slant. Watch the snap of the ball. He looks right and sees the slant. He goes before Steve McNair even throws the ball. Now stop it. If Steve McNair waits a second, that's a risky move by McCree because if he waits to this window, there's nobody around. McNair throws it early, not seeing McCree break on the ball, and there is McCree off to the races. There was only one receiver to that side, and so that was his only responsibility. So calculated risk by Marlon McCree, but he broke before Steve McNair even threw the ball because he looked out to the side, saw the receiver running a slant. Absolutely guessed right. Now let's go to New York for uh, an update with Jim Nance. All right, thank you, Gus. Thank you, Brett. This is something you guys have seen before. We've been waiting for it all day. We're talking about Jamal Lewis. He is home free, 72 yards. Remember, he had that rushing record, that single game performance, first time against the Browns. 72 yards gives him a buck 28 on the day. 14 nothing. Back to you. All right, Jim. Wow, that's a, that's a tough combo, Gus, come playoff time if the Ravens sneak in. That type of frenzied style of defense and a Jamal Lewis in the backfield. Steve Martin has to be helped up. Game tied at 10, back after this. The praise that Mazda 6 has received for applying sports car engineering to a sedan will appeal to all sorts of people. For the safety conscious, the highest government safety rating. For the consumer-minded, the highest-rated mid-size sedan among owners, and 50 international awards for the speed readers. The Mazda 6. Get 0.0% APR financing for five years plus no monthly payments due until June 2004 or 2,500 cash back on selected 2003 Mazda 6 models. First, I emptied the checking account, and then I hit the mall, and there in the window was this sexy little outfit, and oh my gosh, I just had to have it. $1,500 for a leather bustier? I didn't care. It lifts and separates. <laughs> Plus, it's not like I'm actually paying for it. <laughs> Introducing City Identity Theft Solutions, free with any city card. Help getting your life back? That's using your card wisely. Of all the innovations of the past 100 years, arguably the greatest are the forward pass and the ability to catch the forward pass. Introducing the Canon Digital Rebel, a 6.3 megapixel SLR with the revolutionary Digic chip and CMOS technology. The game has changed. The Digital Rebel, the culmination of 68 years of Canon know-how. Thank <laughs> you. 
Access NFL.com for live scores and stats. And after the games, AOL members get exclusive NFL.com features only on AOL. Andy Roddick is the U.S. Open champion. The U.S. Open on CBS Sports. Steve Martin is okay on the Houston sideline. Steve McNair and the Tennessee Titans take over. Second and nine at the 23. Here's McNair to the sideline, incomplete, intended for Mason, and he had room in front of Coleman. Yeah, he did, because Marcus Coleman actually fell down, and Steve McNair delivered that ball just a little high, and you wonder if he's having trouble planting off his right foot. Sometimes when you tender and you can't lock that right foot down, it looks okay there. Ball just delivered high, you see Coleman down on the ground. And let's watch Derek Mason work in space. Pushes Marcus Coleman. Coleman thinks he's going deep. Takes his feet out from under him. And third down. Ball delivered just a little high. Makes it third down and nine at the 23. McNair out of the shotgun. McNair to the sideline again. Incomplete. McCarron's lassoed by Coleman. And he drops the football. Boy, that's the third or fourth time today that we've seen a Titan drop a ball delivered right in the gut. Steve McNair, very accurate for the most part. <laughs> and you know what? When you've got the first down, and we've seen this happen today, hey, just accept the first down. You don't need to get up and get yardage. And I know that's important, and that's what makes Justin McCarron's a great ball player. But at this point in the game, you got to move the chains. Tennessee forced to punt it away. Hendrick inside his own 10. Moses drifting over toward the sideline. Start from 23. Spinning. And finally goes down. A 54-yard punt and a four-yard return. David Carr back on the field. This game is tied at 10. Let us read from the playbook, the King James playbook. And basketball chosen one asked the soul of the game for court vision. And it was granted to him. Can I get a layup? The chosen one didn't ask for her coach rep, bro. He didn't ask for him. Why did the chosen one ask for court vision? I'm gonna tell you why. Just let it say. He wanted glory for the team. Oh, I feel the soul of the game coming over me. thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's highest safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mophead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Get remaining 2003 Sedonas from 17615 after 3000 cash back. Hurry, offer ends soon. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by NikeBasketball.com and by Circuit City. We're with you. Houston, Houston, we have liftoff. <laughs> no problems, Houston. As we take a look at NASA, the Houston Texans have lifted off courtesy of a 95-yard Interception return by Marlon McCree. Let's see if the Texans offense can get cranking here. First and 10 at the 28. Underneath Andre Johnson with the catch at the 43. Tackled by Beckham. But it's a gain of 14. Tonight on 60 Minutes, a 60 Minutes exclusive. Details of the encounter Saddam Hussein had this week in his jail cell with his angry countrymen tonight on CBS. 
Well, you got to admire the fact the Texans has stuck with their game plan throughout. They continue to go dip into that three and four wides look. They continue to throw three-step drops. Tennessee not able to get a lot of pressure on David Carr. He's getting rid of the ball. Here's Davis looking for an opening. Nowhere to go. Davis is taken to the ground by a number of white jerseys in the vicinity. Albert Hainsworth and Kevin Carter on the tackle. You see the defensive line for the Tennessee Titans just getting the surge and the ball, the game is being played on the other side of the line, at least in this series. And that's really what's allowed them to be the top rushing defense in the National Football League. They play on your side of the ball. They get penetration now. Now, how do you stop that? You throw quick passes, you throw screens and draws. We haven't seen a lot of screens and draws from the Texans thus far today, but that's how you stop penetration. Kurt got the penetration. Carr throws on the run. Kurt looked like he was tripped at the last moment. And, you know, I just saw him slap five with Chester Pitts as he was going back to the huddle, and you got to respect the character of this man. He'll respect a good block, and, and uh, I think this time he's going to get around Chester Pitts. Watch him lining up outside, which is a scary thing, and he sets outside, and he comes right underneath. That's one of the toughest things, and you see Chester Pitts just going after him, trying to take a shot at his legs, get anything, and gets the back of his ankle. And that is a scary thing for an offensive lineman when you see Javon Kurz lined up wide and you know you have no help. Third down and 10 at the 42. And the Texans call timeout. 6-10 to go in the third quarter. Our score remains 10-10. Hurry into Circuit City today for big savings on all your last-minute gifts. Save on the year's hottest DVDs, CDs, video games, and more. And be sure to pick up a Circuit City gift card, too. Plus, get this 7-inch widescreen portable DVD player for just $199.99. And save $30 on this Sony 3.2 megapixel digital camera, only $269.99 after rebate. Save on all your last-minute gifts today at Circuit City. We're with you. What's that you have? A bottle. A bottle? Brilliant! What do you do with it? Well, I have found a way to fill it with authentic Guinness draft. And you drink it straight from the bottle no matter where you are? Yes! Drink beer straight from a bottle? Brilliant! What else are you working on? You know the bread we use for our sandwiches? Yes! I've concocted a machine that slices it for you! Brilliant! Brilliant! Guinness draft straight from the bottle. Enjoy it everywhere. Brilliant! It's finally here. SWAT on DVD. Let's try to get in the killing mode. I am the killing mode. Why are you smiling? Because it tickles me. Get the DVD loaded with action-packed special features. I'm starting to like this already. SWAT. Buy it December 30th on special edition DVD. Norelco Advantage with gel prevents nicks and cuts. Oh, how we'll miss them. Advantage from Norelco. Ultra close, ultra comfortable. Guaranteed. CBS Monday. What do you do when your son wants to talk about the birds and the bees? We lost. Still standing. Then, can this regular guy write the next Hollywood blockbuster? Are you scared that one day I might actually be more successful than you? Yeah, that and Bigfoot really keep me up at night. Yes, dear. At a special time, right after Still Standing, CBS Monday. 6-10 to go in the third quarter. Gus Johnson, Brent Jones with you. Game tied at 10 apiece. Third down and 10. At the 42, Texans, two of eight on conversions today. Carr out of the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket, still running. And Carr down the sideline. Out of bounds. What a play by David Carr. Boy, and what a block by Andre Johnson. Because I think Samari Roll had a chance at him. And Samari Roll even gave, he got up and gave him five. David Carr has some more wheels than we expect. Look at Javon Kurse coming full speed around the end. Can't get him. Watch this block right at the bottom of your screen. Bang. Andre Johnson leveling Samari Roll. Carr, four carries today for 40 yards rushing. He's got some quick feet. Very quick feet. First and 10 at the 42 for the Texans. Here's Carr on the short drop, batted down at the line of scrimmage. Nicely done by Lamont Thompson. And that's one of the few times today that we've seen the Titans blitz. 
And that was Lamont Thompson coming from the nickel position right up on the line of scrimmage and getting, he's right outside here, comes off of his man and watch him time the jump. And he knows to time it because David Carr has been throwing almost exclusively three-step drops, Gus, today. We've been talking about the slant routes and the quick outs and the quick passing game of the Texans. And so sooner or later, the only way to get pressure on him is to blitz. Second down and 10 at the 42. Here's Davis trying to get outside. Now cuts it back in. Fumble. Picked up by Samari Rowe. Flag on the play. David Carr's got to make the tackle. Let's see what happens. He's not going to catch Rowe. Rowe down the sideline. It's a touchdown. But there is a flag at the 44. And I would guess that that's actually holding. And one of the Titans is down. I think it's Keith Bullock. I would expect it to be holding against the Texans. That's where the flag was thrown in that vicinity. You don't see the Texans celebrating, which tells me the touchdown is going to stand. Holding, number 69, the offense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. How about that? A 61-yard return for Samari Roll on the Dominic Davis fumble. Boy, and Samari Roll, we've said all along what a playmaker he is. And let's watch what happens to Dominic Davis. Has some room outside. And it's Keith Bullock, I think, gets his arm in there. And then Keith Bullock gets wrapped up in the pile. Watch Samari Roll do a little dance down the sideline. There's Bullock coming through, stripping the ball. Pile lands on top of him. And here's Samari Roll off to the races. Now watch him cut back. David Carr gave a lot better effort than I thought. He almost ends up catching him. Look at him stick with it right to the last second, gets his hands on him, and not quite enough. So Keith Bullock is still down, but... Boy, and what a blow that would be to this Titans defense. Looks like he's okay, though. That, let's gets hope to his so. feet. Little wobbly, Bullock. Made his first Pro Bowl this season. Should have been a Pro Bowler last year. Yeah, and we had a great time talking with him yesterday afternoon, and just a, a very humble man, and and uh, his play on the field speaks for itself. And, and like you said, we thought he could have made it last year. Sometimes you make it a year after you should, and there's Keith Bullock, and he's jogging off, which is a good sign for Titans fans. But uh, it was funny. We were talking to him about him, about the Pro Bowl, and he said, you know, I don't, don't think I can completely appreciate it now, which is exactly the attitude that you have to have. Don't even think about it till you get to Hawaii, especially for a playoff team, because when the Pro Bowl announcements come out, it can really mess with some guys' mind and their focus. Extra point is up and good. But any coach will tell you that he needs his players to come up with big plays. And Samari is a playmaker. Our playmaker at CBS is Jim Nance. Uh, thank you very much there, Gus. Got a little uh, update here. Miami and Buffalo. It has been a long afternoon for Drew Bledsoe. Picked here by Terrell Buckley. T-Buck takes it back for the touchdown and on the very next series Bledsoe was picked again it's 20 to 3 with three minutes to go third quarter back to Gus and Brett all right Jim Buckley making that interception he's another uh, Florida State guy Terrell Buckley came up right after Dion we see a Florida State guy playing well today yeah let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture well we've talked about it a little bit and in New England sitting in the catbird seat Kansas City's going the wrong way Indy's looking to clinch they just need a victory or a Titans loss and and the Titans to go ahead and clinch a wild card spot need either a win today or a loss by Miami which I don't think they're gonna get Baltimore probably not Cincinnati which could happen so even if the Titans lose today, if the Cincinnati Bengals lose, the Titans are going to have one of those wild card spots. Most likely right now, the, the Titans are going to end up with that number five position. And, and that number five position would travel to the AFC North winner, either Cincinnati or Baltimore. If they end up tied with Denver, Denver would be the team that gets the five position. Tennessee would travel to most likely Indianapolis, maybe Kansas City. I'll tell you the team that scares me right now in the AFC. For some reason, the Denver Broncos, nobody's talking about them. This ball is fielded at the 15-yard line by Jonathan Wells, and he gets over the 25, a 14-yard return. Tonight on TV's most watched new drama, the murder of a hitchhiker reopens the cold case, and the prime suspect is playing a twisted game 
with Detective Lily Rush. It's an all-new Cold Case, Sunday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Cold Case starring Catherine Morris. Injured player on the field. How about those Denver Broncos? Boy, I, you know what? I agree with you with one caveat. I want Clinton Portis 100% healthy. Yeah. If he's banged up, it's going to be a uh, short playoff run for the Broncos. And they still have to struggle to get in there. They clearly got the advantage right now, but there's some other teams uh, barking up the tree. And one of these years, I think that's going to happen, Gus, right there. Think so? I think it will. In the not-too-distant future. And I think, I think what you're going to see is Dom Capers concentrating on the defensive side of the ball. Clearly, you might need another offensive lineman or two. I think they're going to go D lineman. I think that they're going to look for a playmaker in the secondary. But I think that they're going to focus on the defensive side of the ball. They have some young playmakers offensively. Another lineman maybe give David Carr some time. Maybe another big play wide receiver. It's not that far away. And we see, we've seen how things can change drastically in the National Football League, i.e. Marvin Lewis and the Cincinnati Bengals. And there's the brain trust, Mr. McNair and Charlie Casserly. Boy, and what a great job Mr. McNair's done with the stadium and in the this city place of Houston. is awesome. It is great. It's an awesome facility. And I think they're they've done well, Charlie. They position themselves well under the cap. They're going to be able to be aggressive in free agency. They've done a solid job in the draft. And we talked earlier about building that 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 second and third team the depth that you have to have to compete because injuries have really hurt the Titans this year when they lost Seth Payne and Gary Walker their two stud defensive linemen that really changed the scope of their defense and they just didn't have they've had guys play hard for them but not with the impact that they had and of course losing Aaron Glenn here a few weeks back the Pro Bowl corner I mean that changed it and there's just not enough depth to be able to step up in there and, and uh, be consistent week in and week out Shanti Orr has to be helped off the field, looks like a knee. But Samari Rowe, one of the smallest guys on the field, has come up with two of the biggest plays. Well, we talked about the Titans and why we like them. He is an aggressive playmaker, and we talked about the Titans going all the way. It's because they have the most playmakers, not only on the offense, but they have playmakers on the D. We've seen Keith Bullock and the two great plays from Samari Rowe, Javon Kurse. Underneath, Bradford has been a playmaker for the Texans the last couple of years gets to the 35. Castle making the tackle after a gain of eight yards. How about Brad Castle coming in last week? He played 17 plays in the game. Rocky Kalmas, linebackers injured. Castle comes in and plays 17 plays and gets credited for nine tackles. He's batting over 500. Yes, he is. It's pretty sweet. Second and two at the 36. <laughs> Carr stepping up, shovels it forward. Intended for Davis, too strong. And that brings up third down and two. Well, see, now you're seeing something happen. You're seeing David Carr take a five-step drop. And you see the difference in pressure between a three-step drop and getting the ball out, which David Carr would be told us would be important, and the five-step drop. No sooner did he set his feet than he was getting pressure from both sides, had to step up. It rattled their, their, their routes, and all of a sudden, things start to change. Third down and two at the 36. And you see David Carr pointing out the possible blitzers to Dominic Davis. Here's Carr underneath, caught by Billy Miller, first down. Gain of seven. When, you know, we talked about Billy Miller earlier in the game, and he's a guy that I think that can do some damage in this league. And I just don't think that they're tight end focused enough here in Houston, but a young quarterback and some playmakers outside, and you see Billy Miller find that seam and turn and square his shoulders. Don't drift, don't get upfield. He knew he had the first down. That was a nice move by Billy. I think he needs to be more involved in the offense. I think he can really help this offense move the change. Miller with 38 catches on the season, two today. And you actually talked to David Carr about using Biller, Miller rather more when he's in trouble. Go up top. Caught. Johnson down at the 
the 20. There's a guy you can go to when you're in trouble. Andre Johnson. Boy, and you've got to respect the Texans for continuing to go after Samari Roll. They want to get the ball in the hands of their playmaker, Andre Johnson. David Carr, three steps, put it up, single coverage. Look at the battle that goes on outside. And actually, it's number 24 for the Titans, Tony Beckham. I thought I saw Roll over there, but Andre Johnson coming up back underneath and doing a great job adjusting to the ball, making an aggressive move for an offensive player. Picks up 37 yards. Johnson now four catches for 66 yards. And that one thrown underneath dangerous pass. Tank Williams was right there for the Titans, intended for Billy Miller. Boy, and Tank Williams is a playmaker. And we've talked about both him and Lance Schultz. You're going to see that two deep coverage that we talk about so often. Here comes Billy Miller trying to get down the seam and David Carr throwing it. But Tank Williams is not getting any width. That means he's not getting any pressure outside by the Texans receiver. So that allows him to collapse back into the tight end trying to hit the seam. And Texans are lucky that didn't come up with an interception there by Tank Williams. Second down, 10 at the 20. Tank Carr in trouble. Looking backside, throws on the right, touchdown! Bradford! And that's Houston's first touchdown pass since Tony Banks connected with Billy Miller on a 16-yard touchdown versus New England four weeks ago. Wow, and you know what made that play possible? It's David Carr's foot speed. He stepped up and eluded Kevin Carter. I don't know how he got out of the way. Watch him. Pressure, pocket collapsing, three-step drop fake. Watch him slide around. Here comes Kevin Carter. Just steps up, gets out. And Corey Bradford battling with Beckham on the ball thrown behind him makes a nice grab. And once again, we're tied. 2.55 to go in the third quarter. It's the Texans 17. The Titans 17. And, and let's watch, watch this pass, and Brent. Let's watch Corey Bradford continue to battle. He seats David Carr. He's just a, a decoy at this point. Gets his hands up. Stop, move, little arm over. And Beckham, he actually might have pushed him low. And let's watch it. And there it is. Throwing it downfield. David Carr fired up. And they're thinking penalty from the Titans side. But nice move by Bradford. And let's watch David Carr. What's going on? Steve McKinney's getting under the goalpost. We've seen this before. No. Hey, stay off the horn. That's right. No, no, no. We're going to stay off the horn. We'll leave the clowns in New Orleans. On a, a little good. You see David Carr. You know what? That's funny, though. That's good. Even without picking up the phone, he could be getting a little bill in the mail. I know the NFL is cracking down on those premeditated premeditated celebrations. As you speak, Jacksonville is beating New Orleans 20 to 13. There he is, David Carr. He can go back to the sideline and get on the phone. There you go. And talk to his coaches about the game. That's exactly right. Use the uh, landline. It's a lot safer, a lot cheaper. <laughs> 17 apiece. And you just got to admire the Texans. And we said at the top of the show, this can be a dangerous game because you have a team that's playing for nothing. Pride, there's pulling out all the stops, and you got a team that's feeling pressure, trying to clinch a playoff spot. McCarron's from the five. Over the 25 to the 28. Travis Carroll with the tackle on special teams. Next Saturday, CBS Sports, NCAA basketball rolls out one of the all-time big rivalries when Rick Pitino's Louisville Cardinals tangle with Tubby Smith's top-ranked Kentucky Wildcats or the UCLA Bruins take on the Wolverines of Michigan. And you're going to be doing that Louisville-Kentucky game, aren't you? Oh, yeah. I might have to hit you up for some tickets. <laughs> no problem. We're going to be in Cincinnati what next a, weekend. What a scene in Lexington. Corey Bradford, fourth touchdown reception this year. First down and 10 at the 28 for Steve McNair and the Titans. Here's McNair underneath, drops it off to Eddie George. And Eddie George gets to the 35. Jamie Sharper brings him down. And here's a guy, Jamie Sharper, that uh, should have probably been 
going to Hawaii as well. He's yeah. had an awesome season. Yeah, and you know what? You got to measure his season against the fact that he lost Seth Payne and Gary Walker's two defensive line mates, studs, and so he's been running the defense. And, and it's tough for an inside linebacker to completely run the field and dominate all the time with new defensive linemen in there. And I think that just speaks to the season that Jamie Sharper's had. Second and four. McNair again steps up in the pocket. Steve McNair goes forward and gets to the 40. He gains six in a first down, but you just hold your breath, Brent, when you see Steve McNair get out of the pocket. You know, I was holding my breath, and it's weird. He's not clearly running like he can. You see him dropping back, and it's just not the same burst, and he's got his receivers covered, and there he steps up. He's carrying that leg a little bit, that ankle. You can see a little bit of a limp. Still a tough man to bring down, protects the ball, and gets the first down. And what a gamer this guy is, and we've been seeing it all year. He is a throwback player. First and ten at the 40-yard line. McNair to throw. Pumping. Over the middle. Caught. Frank Wycheck. And Frank Wycheck gets to the Houston 35. A 25-yard pickup. There's another tough one. Yeah, darn right. We hadn't seen Wake Frank Wycheck today, and, and the Titans actually went back to that stop-and-go route. Watch Steve McNair pump and look deep for Justin McCarron. Two deep coverage. Texans didn't bite on it this time. Hits his big tight end on the crossing route. And Frank Wycheck, who's been such a big part of this offense over the years when it was just basically Frank Wycheck and the Eddie George show, and they've opened it up more this last year and a half and these young receivers that have come on kind of rendered the tight end position not as significant in the offense. Here's George and he leads forward to the 30. Frank Wycheck, Brent, as a tight end going over the 500 reception mark for career. Yeah, and, and what, a, what a great ball player he is. And you know what, to roam across the middle and do what Frank's done and to catch the ball and to take the hits and you know he suffered some concussions and that's been uh, part of the problem this year you just have so much respect for a guy and, and especially me because you know what that takes and it's such a tough position and guys they come in with a lot of hype all the time and you have first rounders and, and big shots here's a guy that just did it and let his play speak for itself that's the end of the third quarter with the score 17 apiece we'll return to Reliance Stadium right after this word from your local station Critics call the Christmas shoes compelling. A touching holiday story that grabs the gut and refuses to let go. Rob Lowe in the Christmas shoes, CBS Tonight. Catch two and a half men. TV's most watched new comedy, Monday on CBS. There are a lot of reasons why Ford trucks are the best in Texas, and one reason why now's the best time to buy. It's year-end clearance at your Texas Ford dealer. No one offers more number one sellers like F-150, Super Duty, and Ranger. And now through the 31st, no one offers numbers like these. Clearance financing as low as 0% for 72 months, or just announced get 3,500 cash on F-150. Plus, put 1,000 down and Ford Credit will match it for a total 5,500 down. Only during clearance at your Texas Ford dealer. 37, 37, 38, Lou, 37, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Daddy, why does the deli man hate you? Introducing two freshly made sandwiches from Jack, an ultimate club stacked with oven roasted turkey, hickory smoked ham, and mouth watering bacon, and a roasted turkey sandwich with zesty herb mayo sauce, both on toasted hearth baked rolls. Psst, dude, can you score me some coleslaw? <laughs> Chevy's wrapping up the year with $2,500 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months for qualified buyers on every 2004 Chevy Silverado. That's $2,500 cash back or 0 APR on Silverado. The Chevy year-end wrap-up. Chevy, driving Texas. Wrap it up. Lisa Ferranda, weeknights at 5 and 10 on 11 News. All right, a look at the scoring by quarters. Houston turning it up in the third with 14 points. Our score is 17 apiece. But Tennessee is driving. Second and six at the 31. 
Here comes the blitz. Eddie George with the lane. Eddie George breaks it back. Look at the big fella rumble all the way inside the five. Vintage Eddie George on that play. Boy, and what a great job by the left side of the Titans offensive line. 72, Brad Hopkins. And let's watch Shad Meyer, too, right here. Number 84, the tight end. Watch him get up here. There's the block. There's the seam. You see him shield off inside. And this Titans running game has been a lot more so. Gusty's last three or four weeks, you saw Eddie George right there. Clearly gaining some confidence running the ball. 27-yard gain for Eddie. Uh-oh, Brad Hopkins jumping. False start, number 72, offense. Five-yard penalty still, first down. And you think the play is going to the right? Watch Brad Hopkins. Oh, let's see. Uh-oh. Hope nobody notices. Yeah, those things happen sometimes. First down and goal at the nine. Out of the offset eye. Meyer and George in the backfield. Mason in motion. Here's Eddie George again. Running over the left side. He gets back to the five. And that's the same play they just ran with Shad Meyer being basically the lead blocker from the H-back position. Having the tight end get up in there and kick out a linebacker. Meyer doing a nice job of clearing the way for Eddie George once again. You see Jeff Fisher trying to decide what play to go to. And remember, Gus, before they went to the slant, and that's when Marlon McCree jumped out and jumped the route and went 95 yards. So I don't think you're going to see a slant from the Titans right here. Second and goal at the six. George. Picking his way forward, getting close to the goal line. A late flag thrown. And it's a holding call against Tennessee. Boy, and I wonder if they're going to get the right tackle. Fred Miller looked like he was having a solid block from up this way. Was thrown in that direction. Holding, number 72 offense. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Uh-oh, Brad Hopkins again. That's two in a row. That's not when you want to be called out, and Brad Hopkins has had such a solid year for the Tennessee Titans. Let's watch number 72. Here he is. Hands are inside. There's where you got to let go. Let go. And see, that's a little bit of nice acting by Jerry Delopes, too. You, your hand's right there. You're inside, but the defender is pulling away from you. You've got to let go, and at that point, I think Jerry Delos just does a little bit of a flop and gets the call. So it's second and goal at the 16-yard line. They fake the reverse, give it to Brown straight ahead, and there's no room. That'll bring up third down and goal. Boy, and that uh, makes it tough when it's third and goal from the 15. And you got to give credit to this defensive front for the Houston Texans. They're getting some penetration right here, fighting off the double team, nowhere to go, and continuing to fight off. You see Deloach once again inside, and the pressure. Big number 99, Steve Martin. Creating some havoc inside. Now you're going to have to go, Gus, to a five-step drop. Probably best to operate out of the shotgun right here if you're the Titans, so Steve McNair can see where the blitz is coming from. And McNair calls a timeout. 11.59 to go on the fourth. We're tied at 17. You, me, outside. We gotta talk. A minivan? It gotta be like, be like, what kind of action do you think we're gonna get in a minivan? Might as well walk around in a skirt. We had game then. And then you go and... Nice. It's got a big back seat. <laughs> the Odyssey from Honda. Go!
one and only Docker Stain Defender. Sometimes all it takes is a switch. So find out if switching to new Levitra is your next move. Ask your doctor if a free sample is right for you. Ask about new Levitra. The experts at Oral-B are on a mission to protect your teeth and gums with the new Oral-B Professional Care 7000. Its 3D action removes more plaque than Sonicare Elite and even reverses gum disease. Oral-B Professional Care. Brush like a dentist. This week, at 15, he weighed 509 pounds. This past August, he underwent the ultimate operation, and you won't believe how much he weighs now. His story, plus Steve Martin, this week on The Early Show. Big play coming up for Dom Capers in the Texans' defense. The fans here in Houston, they want the defense to show up right now. Third down goal. And I'd imagine the Texans are going to come with the blitz. You don't want to give Steve McNair time to set his feet. You see him come out this time in shotgun so he can read where that blitz is coming from. McNair out of the gun with time. Throws Bennett. And he's out of bounds inside the 10 at the 8. Eric Brown, the strong safety, making the tackle. And the Texans actually didn't go with the blitz, only rushed three and sat back and dropped eight. Nobody open for the Titans to see Steve McNair get pressure and scramble out. But he could have moved to his right and still bought some more time. Just hit Bennett underneath, and they're going to have to settle for a field goal. Gary Anderson, 13 of 13 this season, under 40 yards. This one's the 26. He's already hit a 41-yarder today. It's up and money. The 22-year veteran gives the Titans a 20 to 17 lead. tasting beer because you can get in line and take what they give you or you can make your own choice miller good call it's the jc penny last minute gift sale sunday through wednesday save 20 to 60 percent off great gifts plus ten dollar instant coupon savings or give jc penny gift cards the perfect last minute gift it's all the inside jc penny introducing remington's new titanium smart system the only shaver that combines the sharpness of titanium coated blades with the technology to automatically clean itself. It could just make all other shavers obsolete. All right, here we go. On three. One. CRV from Honda for the way you really live or want to. Okay, plan B. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Honda Odyssey. There are minivans, then there's the Odyssey. The new Remington Titanium Series, the shaver with the sharpness of titanium coated blades. And by Miller, there's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Beautiful shot of the Houston skyline. 20 to 17, the Tennessee Titans lead the Texans. It's been a very competitive game, a game filled with big play after big play. So Houston will receive it once again, down by three. Moses from the 12. And he gets to the 30-yard line, maybe the 32. Take a look at some of the big plays. Little hook and go. Great pump by Steve McNair and Justin McCarrens. Big play down to the half-yard line. Then Marlon McCree stepping in, up in front of a slant. And off to the races, 95 yards for a touchdown. And the Texans 
answering again with a touchdown pass. David Carr, Corey Bradford, they're looking for another hookup. Are they going to have cell service under the goalpost? <laughs> nah, they're not going to get on the horn. That's for teams that, uh, that don't have a lot of class. Uh, look at the game summary. 157 rushing yards. Tennessee. Here's Davis at a key fumble. That Samari roll returned for a touchdown. Well, the Texans' plan was to chew some clock and stay in the game into the fourth quarter, and that's exactly what they've done. 11 minutes left here in the fourth, and they've played well, and they've had some of their uh, big-time guys come up with big plays, and uh, they have not backed down. And like we said, sometimes a team with nothing to lose can play a little bit more loose and easy. Second down, eight at the 34. Underneath it again. This time it's caught. Billy Miller, eight of six. And what a throw and catch. And you talk about David Carr and his arm strength. He's got some tremendous torque. He really turns those shoulders. He rotates those shoulders. And his mechanics are really nice. I like the way he delivers the ball. You see a lot of quarterbacks with sloppy mechanics in the NFL nowadays. Third down, two at the 40. Carr, short drop again. To the sideline incomplete. And the Texans have to punt it away. Three and out for Houston here in the fourth quarter. The big stand by the Titans defense. Playing some tighter bump coverage. Texans receivers weren't able to get open. So Chad Stanley will punt for the sixth time. And it looks like Gus, one of the Texans special teams players missing and all the guys are yelling. Only got 10 men on the field. Play clock down to nine. Yeah, that's a good way to get a punt block. Stanley gets it all. High wobbly kick. And it's very caught at the five. That's one that Mason will think about. Titans backed up. New plant location? San Diego. San Diego? The ocean. The sun. The people. A problem. Problem? Crisis. Big problem. Solution? Pittsburgh. 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 Good paper. Best paper. Pittsburgh paper. Perfect. Pursue the potential Pittsburgh property pronto. Let's eat. Next, tell walkie-talkies get it done. Be there first. Where no sports sedan has been before. The all-new 270 horsepower Acura TL. A higher form of performance. I think my mom and dad are going to live to be 200. And they're very special people in my world. Not having parents would be hard because... He would be stinky, because he wouldn't have a bath. CBS Tonight, a hitchhiker's murder. A young white male walked into the woods, shot once in the chest. It looks exactly like a crime from the past, and the prime suspect is playing one hell of a game. Maybe it's a polygraph. With Detective Lily Rush. Come closer, Dolly. I want to tell you something. All new Cold Case, CBS Tonight. Coming up on the Subway post-game show, join Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer for all of today's scores and highlights, plus the complete NFL playoff picture that's coming up on the Subway post-game show. First and ten at the seven-yard line. Here's Eddie George following his block, and he's wrapped up and taken down maybe a yard on the play. You know, Gus, I wasn't thrilled with the fact that Derek Mason fair caught that ball in the seven-yard line. Clearly, there wasn't a lot of defenders down. It would have bounced into the end zone unless a miraculous ball bounced just stopped right there. But that's that, at this point in the game, that's a mental mistake because now you're backed up and you are put pressure on your offense. 
Second down, eight at the nine. George again gets to the 10, maybe the 11 on the play. Stopped by Steve Martin. Isn't C. Martin going to be on with David Letterman this week? Yeah, he is. That's great. Plays the game and then travels to New York. That's good. That's a pretty funny guy here. <laughs> he was born as Martin jogs off the field. You caught yourself in <laughs> Third down and six at the 11. Hey, both Steve Martins are making an impact. Yes. Titans are three of 10 on third down conversions today. And a flag on the play. Brown running. Let's see the call. Delay of game. Offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. Wow. Uh, probably not the smartest game we've seen the Titans play this year and they've come up with big plays but a few mental mistakes along the way and this just exacerbates the fact that Derek Mason caught the ball fair caught it on the seven and so you're still backed up at this point and, and what a huge third down conversion this is because the Texans would have some great field position if they can hold right here so they're on their feet here in Houston Titans face with the third and 11 at their own six. Boy, Texans got to bring the blitz. Don't let Steve McNair have time to throw. And they hand it off. Brown dives forward and comes close to the first down. I don't think he has it, though. Gains 10 yards. Boy, he's going to be off. Needed 11. Yeah, I think he's going to be half a yard short. Heck of an effort by the rookie running back. Let's watch the right side of the line for the Titans. Let's watch the blocking on the draw. And you see the, the, the rub block right there. And there's a the block inside. And Eric, Chris Brown doesn't get tripped up right there. Just one more step. He could have fallen forward for the first down. Just his back right leg was clipped out from under him. And he fell down probably a half yard short of the first down, I'd imagine. You've been right all day. That really gets under your skin. Yeah, it kind of does. First time for everything. And you've been wrong. I've been sweating with this <laughs> turtleneck at 70 degrees. <laughs> but you've been right beside that. So Brown disappointed that he was unable to get the first down. Brings on Hendrick to punt for the sixth time. Moses is back deep. Wait. Texans with the great opportunity, Brett, to get terrific field position. And Gus, it just shows you how much the little things mean in a big game. We talked about Derek Mason, the fair catch on the seven, then the false start penalty, and you don't convert on third down, and your punter's kicking from your own two-yard line. Hendrick sends it away and gets off off by Moses. Bounds inside the 30. What a punt for Hendrick. Well, I guess that's why he's going the Pro Bowl, huh? 56 yards. Wow. And that might be the play of the game. And we've had a lot of big plays today, and you don't say a punt, but holy cow, was that a rocket shot out of bounds. Nice little net on that one for Craig Hendrick. He's going to be going to Hawaii. You had some advice for some of the guys going to Hawaii. Oh, yeah, I gave him the... Uh, Keith Bullock in particular. I told Keith Bullock he's got to get the pay the little bit extra and get the suite over there on Oahu. He's got some nice suites overlooking the ocean. But then I told him, but don't think about it till after the uh, season's over. Don't want to distract him. First down at 10 at the 28. Play action. And Carl taken down at the 20. Finally, they get to him. A sack on the day, the first sack of the day, and it's Kevin Carter. And it's about time, and we've seen Kevin Carter getting much closer each time. Let's watch number 93 going inside from the outside position. And that's just a mismatch. He's going against the tight end, Jabari Holloway, who had a little help inside, but a tight end one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Carter is not the way to block him. And we saw the Texans go to a five-step drop, and we said once that happened, the floodgates could open. 
Second and 17 to the 21, underneath, incomplete. Carr throwing off his back foot on that play. And you know what? Some quarterbacks can't throw off their back foot. They don't, their arms aren't strong enough. But David Carr is clearly strong enough. And if throwing off your back foot was that much of a sin, Brett Favre would have never played in the NFL because he does it all the time. All the time. That's and we, part of his game. That's exactly it. I think David Carr has better mechanics, but his arm is strong. And he's one of the few guys that can probably get away with it. John Elway could. We've seen uh, Brett Favre. David Carr has that type of arm strength. Third down, 17 at the 21. Carr out of the shotgun, underneath, caught by Gaffney. And Gaffney gets to the 34-yard line before being pushed backwards, a 14-yard gain. Tank Williams brings him down, but the Texans have to punt it away. And what's the blitz coming from outside? Three-step drop once again. Carr delivered in the face of pressure. Gets the, bar out, the ball out to Gaffney, but still not enough for the first down. And that Kevin Carter sack ends up being the story of that little series. Well, Stanley's also had a good day punting the football. Yes, he has, and it's about time Derek Mason had a little breakthrough return. This one hangs in the air, and Mason with a fair catch at the 26, a 39-yard punt. Here comes Steve McNair, and the Titans up by three. Passenger, electronic four-wheel drive, Acura MDX. Power and safety, living in perfect harmony. You should have taken Imodium the first time. It stops diarrhea, often in just one dose. Imodium AD. Don't wait till it's too late. Observe the panicked look of shopper last minute. Fortunately, Helsberg Diamonds Value Promise ensures the perfect gift at the perfect price. Behold, shopper saved his buttocks. Helsberg Diamonds. Confidence comes in a burgundy box. Merry Mug, Merry Mug, smooth and stubble free. Hugs is mud, no pull, no tug. Reflex action's key. Oh, Merry Mug, Merry Mug, smooth as smooth can be. Give your guy a real go. Shave some clothes as close can be. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Hellsburg Diamonds. Confidence comes in a burgundy box. And by Imodium. Where will you be when your diarrhea comes back? Welcome back to Houston, 6.34 to go. In the fourth quarter, Titans up 20 to 17. Beautiful stadium, retractable roof, and they're getting prepared for the Super Bowl, and it should be a rocking good time here in the Lone Star State. We'd like to welcome those of you that have watched Cincinnati and St. Louis. Here's Justin McCarron with the catch on the sideline for the Titans. And the final score of that game, 27 to 10 for you Titans fans. With Cincinnati losing, the Titans have already clinched a playoff spot. So they don't have to win this game. They are in. And, and now really it's just the difference for Jeff Fisher's team, Gus, between that fifth seed and sixth seed. And for them to actually win the division, they'd have to win these this game today and next week and hope that Indianapolis loses both of those games which probably won't happen. So most likely they're looking at a fifth seed, which would take them to the home of the AFC North division champion, which right now could look like the Baltimore Ravens. Eddie George. And George gets to the 40. Gain of four. Kenny Wright with the tackle. And it would be so ironic if Tennessee had to travel to Baltimore. Those teams have a rivalry going, not only on the field, but on the sidelines as well. Jeff Fisher and Brian Billick. Let's just say I don't think they're uh, exchanging Christmas cards every year. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. 
And uh, that ought to be interesting. Of course, the Bengals still have a chance. They need to win next week and hope for a Baltimore loss against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then I believe that Cincinnati would have the tiebreaker over Baltimore, but right now, that's looking like an outside shot. First and 10 at the 40. Brown tries to turn the corner, and Jay Foreman refuses to allow him to. And that will make it second down and nine at the 41-yard line. And Gus, this point in the game right now is exactly what the Tennessee Titans look forward to during the year, and they've done this all year, and you see Chris Brown hitting it up inside. But they've been as good as ball control and clock control team as there has been in the National Football League. One of the leaders in time of possession, and we're inside five minutes now at 440, and they continue to chew clock. They'll move the chains. They won't necessarily try for the big shot. They're just going to continue to work that clock right down and move those chains. Second down, nine. Texans need somebody to step up and make a play. Here's Brown again. And he's ridden to the ground at the 45 by Jamie Sharper. All right, let's take a look at the game summary after the five-yard pickup. Tennessee has controlled the ball on the ground, 176 yards rushing. Steve McNair has passed for 193. Two turnovers for the Texans. One, a touchdown for Samari Roll off a Dominic Davis fumble. Third down five at the 45. Houston desperately in need of a stop. In need of a stop. They run it. Brown. And he will not pick up the first down. Jay Foreman. Yeah, and he's going to be two yards short. And I know it's a pretty tough situation, but the Titans haven't been afraid to go ahead and fake the ball on the punt team this year, so you never know. 3.20 to go in the fourth quarter. The Ravens just demolishing Cleveland 35 to nothing. And you have to wonder if Butch Davis will be asked to return as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. His team playing so poorly at home and so poorly the entire season. Hendrick punts it away, gets away another missile. Moses allows it to go over his head and into the end zone. But this game has been filled with big play after big play. Titans leading at 20 to 17, but the Texans have refused to die, and they have played hard from the opening kickoff. Dom Capers having his team motivated. Five wins on the season, and now he'll have it at the 20-yard line with 2.50 to go. And in the field of play, when David Carr has looked for a big play, he's really focused on Andre Johnson, his first round pick this year, big play wide receiver, who's come in and made a big impact in the league this year as a rookie. You don't usually see that from a wide receiver. That's the right. toughest position to come in and make a big impact, but Andre Johnson has done just that. Johnson on the day, four catches, 66 yards. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. For David Carr, steps up down the seam, it's caught. Armstrong makes the catch. One official said it was a catch. Another one waved it off. Boy, and I thought it hit ground. That was my initial reaction. Incomplete. And let's see, I know he had his hands down trying to scoop. Let's watch Armstrong. Carr having to loft it over the linebackers. There it is, just enough to get over. Oh, Whoa. that looked like some hands, it huh? It looks like his hands were his under hands the football. His hands were scooping. He Ruined brought it right up. The receiver caught the ball. First down. Dang. And they give him a catch. Nice. That was the right call. You can just tell by the way that ball scoops right up. Nice grab by Armstrong, scooping those hands up off the ground. Ball's coming right on the fingertip, and he pulls it right up. An 18-yard gain. And you can feel... The intensity starting to grow here. Car again. Underneath, Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson with a catch of 42 yards. And the Houston Texans are on the move. 
as we approach the two-minute warning. They're down by three. And we just said when David Carr looks for a big play in the passing game, he's looking for Andre Johnson. You see him get into that second window. He continued on his slant route, almost became like a skinny post. You can see what he can do with the ball in his hands after the catch. Hey, Tim. Thanks for being the designated driver. You mind giving my uncle a ride home, too? No problem. Great. How you doing? Why, thank you for asking. I'm doing fine. The people in that bar sure were friendly. And boy, that popcorn was good, too. Not a single kernel went unpopped. Let me ask y'all a question. If y'all ever had popcorn with cheese on it, delicious. Hey, let's do this again real soon. I'm free next Friday. E-server. 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 These are not normal servers. They're better than that. They adjust and predict. So you'll never see rats. For systems like Linux and other types, too. They love open standards. No kidding, it's true. For big firms and small firms. And those in the middle. E-server's the answer to your business riddle. They're flexible, bendable. Super reliable. Utterly viable. Give them a tryable. IBM E-server X-Series features the Intel Xeon processor. They smell great. Oh, they're beautiful. Would you get a dozen? Yeah. I just love how fresh they are. Did someone bring a bouquet? Actually, it's more like a bouquet. Ah! There's nothing like the smell of freshly prepared, freshly cooked KFC. And right now, pick up a holiday meal with all the fixings and get a large popcorn chicken free. But I'd buy flowers. <laughs> For kitchen fresh chicken, you got a KFC what's cooking. A 60 Minutes exclusive. Details of the encounter Saddam Hussein had this week in his jail cell with his angry countrymen. Tonight. How did a 16-year-old girl disappear from a mental hospital? Anybody have a break out of this room before? Joan of Arcadia's Amber Tamblyn guests without a trace. Thursday. Tennessee leads 20 to 17, but the Texans are driving with the football at the Tennessee 20. We'd like to welcome those of you that watch Miami defeat Buffalo 20 to 3. First and 10 at the 20 yard line for David Carr and the Texans. Dominic Davis sprinting to the corner, breaks a tackle out of bounds at the five. When we've talked about what Dominic Davis adds to this offense, watch the balance and the explosion of this young man. He follows his blocker, gets outside, breaks tackles. You see him turn, look at that balance, breaking tackles, delivering the blow down the sideline. What a find for this Houston Texans team this year. Fourth round draft pick picks up 15 yards. He's out of LSU. First and goal at the five. Davis, the lone setback. Here's Davis over the left side. Touchdown, Hilton. Electricity in this building. The Houston Texans are a minute 48 away from knocking off the Tennessee Titans. Extra point is up and good. How about this? And Houston how, takes a 24 to 20 lead. And how about Dominic Davis? These last couple plays, but he got some big help from his left guard, Todd Washington but just put on a pancake block. Watch number 77 right here. Watch this pull, stay on him. Whoa, keep driving, bang! Took Tank Williams and decleated him, creating a huge gap for Dominic Davis to walk right into the end zone. Tennessee, with their backs against the wall now, and you may get it. You're 148 away from a nice Christmas present to the fans here in Houston. 
Dominic Davis with the five yard run and the Texans have taken a 24 to 20 lead over the Titans. And Gus, the important big picture nugget today and you see Dom Capers pretty fired up there on the sideline. And let's go to his reaction after that big block and run. That's the way to go guys. But the important big picture nugget is the Cincinnati Bengals lost. That puts the Tennessee Titans into the playoffs. They've clinched a berth. The question now, will they be the fifth seed or sixth seed? There's a long shot possibility that if they win out and the Colts lose both of their games, they would win the division. That doesn't look like it's gonna happen at this point. Texans send it away. Here's McCarron from the five. Garrett gets to the 25. So let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture. Brett, break it down for us. New England's in the best position to have home field position throughout. Kansas City's on the decline. Indy's playing well. Baltimore goes up on top with the win today in the AFC North where Cincinnati lost. So Tennessee is in, and the other guys are still fighting Denver and Miami at this point for that wild card position. Here's the difference, Gus, between the fifth seed and sixth seed for the Tennessee Titans. If you're the fifth seed, you're going to go to the winner of the AFC North home spot to play in the playoffs. Right now, that looks like Baltimore. So the fifth seed would be Baltimore or Cincinnati if somehow they win the division. Sixth seed puts you in a spot that you really don't like. It sends you to Indianapolis in the Dome or Kansas City. One of those teams will have a bye, a first round bye. The other will be the third division winner with the lowest playoff record. And that would be a tough spot for Jeff Fisher's team to have to go on the road the first week. They'd much rather be going to Baltimore or Cincinnati than Indy or KC. Injured player on the field. See, you've been doing your homework there, buddy. I'm, I'm See, now I don't have to study anymore. You I don't just, even have to worry about the I just the pitch it right stuff. to you. You know, about week 10 or 12 when I was playing, I'd have all the scenarios broken down. I'd know all the tiebreakers. I, you know, it was one of those things where I wanted to know where my next check was coming from. <laughs> coming up on the Subway Post Game Show, join Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer for all of today's scores and highlights, plus the complete NFL playoff picture. That's coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. And those guys will definitely break it down for you. St. Nick, Dominic Davis with a huge five-yard touchdown. And Wright has to be helped to his feet. Kenny Wright. Boy, and that's, and that's a, a crushing blow at this point in the game. Kenny Wright taking over for Aaron Glenn after Aaron Glenn went on injured reserve. And you see Kenny Wright getting his left knee twisted up under the pile. Let's hope that's not serious. Kenny Wright's come in and done a solid job replacing Aaron Glenn. So now if I'm the Tennessee Titans, I look outside, I say, who are they putting in to replace Kenny Wright? It looks like it's number 38, Demarcus Fagans, who's also had some time these last couple weeks, young ball player, I go after him. Steve McNair with the buck 42 remaining. Team down by four. McNair just gets rid of it. And that brings up second down and 10. And you can see Steve McNair hobbled. Obviously was feeling better early in the game. Probably took a couple pain-killing shots. At this point, probably went in and got some at halftime. But they start to wear off the middle of the fourth quarter. A minute 35 left. You can see him carrying that right ankle. He's limping a little bit. Not as mobile in the pocket. If I'm the Texans, I blitz him. I put pressure in his face now. Don't give him time to stand and set his feet. Second down, 10 of the 25. McNair out of the gun. In trouble, scramble. McNair throws on the run. Bennett with the catch at the 45. And he put that one on the money. A gain of 20. Yes, he did. And Drew Bennett does a spectacular job of coming back beneath the coverage between both defenders. Come back to your quarterback. You see McNair searching him out. Here comes Bennett right back between them. McNair again. They get to the line quickly. McNair dumps it off. Brown with the catch. Trying to get out of bounds. He doesn't. He gains eight yards in Tennessee. Burns a timeout. Boy, and what a big time tackle by Fagans out, not letting him get out of bounds, and that's cost Tennessee a timeout, that tackle. One timeout remaining for the Titans. 
It's been a game filled with big plays here in Houston. Football League on CBS Sports, and we've got a good one for you right here. 24 to 20, Houston with the lead. The Tennessee Titans, though, on the move. Second and two at the 47. Under a minute to play. Here's McNair with time throwing. Bennett with the catch at the 25. Drew Bennett down at the 23-yard line. Boy, and he spun Derek Vaughn completely around. Tennessee with the heart of a champion. Boy, and, Steve, and they haven't batted an eye. Steve McNair was throwing that ball fading away. It looked like it was just hanging up there, but throwing it high for his big wide receiver, six foot five, Drew Bennett. You see the pressure McNair throwing off his back foot. And, and you see Bennett and the coverage by Derek Vaughn going the other way. Nice route by Drew Bennett. And McNair putting it where his big receiver is the only one that can get it. Second down and 10 at the 23 for Steve McNair. Here's Steve in the end zone. McCarran's incomplete. And McCarran's is down. When the Titans went right after Demarcus Fagans, we've seen it a couple times on this drive coming in for Kenny Wright. And Justin McCarron's getting single coverage at the top of your screen. That's exactly the right throw. Steve McNair just puts a little bit too much on it and leads McCarron's out of bounds. McCarron's had a step on Fagans. A lot of the focus in this point is going to be on Derek Mason. So watch for Steve McNair looking for Justin McCarron's. Third down, 10 at the 23. McNair again to the sideline. Incomplete. And that brings up fourth down and ten. And once again, going after Demarcus Fagans with Justin McCarron's. Gus, will they come back on fourth down and try the same thing? 24 seconds to go. The Texans with a four-point lead. Steve McNair, the heart and soul of this Tennessee Titans team. He's banged up, playing with basically a broken ankle. And this Titans team needs a win. And listen to this crowd, four and 10. They need to go to the 14. McNair looks backside, Bennett's open, touchdown Tennessee! Holy Toledo, that's your MVP right there. Steve McNair, what a comeback with seven seconds left and you can see Jeff Fisher fired up unbelievable because the Texans brought the blitz they brought five guys and you got to credit the offensive line for the Titans they gave Steve McNair time to look front side and then backside where Drew Bennett put on a spectacular move and went right by Marcus Coleman the Titans go 75 yards in eight plays took them a minute and 31 seconds the extra point is up and good 17 seconds remaining tennessee reclaims the lead 27 24. boy and watch this pressure here comes the blitz here's the stunts look at the time steve mcnair has and look at how open drew bennett is going against marcus coleman grabs the ball gets his feet in and quiets the crowd. Steve McNair. I tell you what, he's the toughest man in the NFL. He shouldn't have played today. Received a couple of shots before the game at halftime. And his head coach believes. And you talk about something, the type of momentum, the type of enthusiasm that can carry you right into the playoffs. And Dom Capers 
What a battle by his team today. And we've said this team is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the near future. And they fought hard all day and had it up until that last few seconds. The 17th game-winning drive for Steve McNair, but this isn't over. That may be a premature statistic coming from us here at CBS. 17 seconds to go. 27 to 24. And the Texans have two timeouts remaining. And they're looking for a successful return right here. And they're going to be looking to get down at least to the 35 of the Titans. 17 seconds left to allow Chris Brown to get into field goal range. Short kick. Fielded at the 18-yard line by Hollings. And he gets over the 30 to the 33. One more look at the Drew Bennett touchdown. Let's watch the move that Drew Bennett puts on Marcus Coleman. Gets outside, stops, and just keeps running and cuts him off inside. Marcus Coleman just lost track of him. I didn't know how he got a step and a half beyond Marcus Coleman, but Drew Bennett just using his body position to get in front of the big corner. And that's what you talk about, getting off a of bump coverage. You get off, you use your size, and you use your strength. And Steve McNair put it right on the money. So the Texans with two timeouts, 13 seconds to go. Need about 35, maybe 38 yards to get in field goal range. Here's Carr down the field, picked up, and that'll do it. Second interception of the game for Samari Roll, and the Tennessee Titans somehow dodge a bullet, and they will leave Houston winners 27-24. My goodness. What a finish here in Houston. And you got to give the Texans got so much credit. We've done games the last couple weeks where teams have just phoned it in, just been walking, going through the motions in the game. And this Texan team has gone out and really played some ball today. Played loose, played aggressive, and you got to admire their effort. And for this Tennessee Titans ball club, putting themselves in great position for that fifth seed in the wild card that would bring them to the AFC North winner, which looks like it could be Baltimore right now unless they lose and Cincinnati wins next week. McNair takes a knee, but the Warrior prevails once again. Steve McNair leads the Tennessee Titans to victory, 27-24. For Brent Jones, this is Gus Johnson saying so long from Houston. Coming up next, it's the Subway Post Game Show. You've been watching the National Football League on CBS, home of Super Bowl 38. Big play after big play today at Reliance Stadium, and Tennessee wins it.